process, what authorities just said. General Mark Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, going on the record saying he should not have been with President Trump after those peaceful protesters were forcibly removed from in front of the White House for that photo op at St. John's Church, what General Milley is now saying. The alarming prediction tonight on coronavirus here in the U.S., the toll could be as many as 200,000 American lives lost by September. More than 20 states tonight with spikes. Houston, moments ago, warning if this gets any worse, we will have to go to level one, which would mean a stay-at-home recommendation only leaving for food or medicine. Tonight, Arizona, ICUs there filling up. And tonight, the staggering toll on the U.S. economy and American families, the Dow plunging, and what the Federal Reserve Chairman said about jobs that might never come back. The disturbing police confrontation under investigation tonight, the body camera images showing two white officers stopping two black teenagers accused of jaywalking. And what happens next? News coming in now from Seattle protesters taking over a police station, seizing a six block area, calling it an autonomous zone. President Trump tonight blasting the mayor, the mayor telling the president, go back to your bunker. The question from a lawmaker in Ohio, who also happens to be a doctor, what he asks about African-Americans and the coronavirus that draws outrage. The medical expert who then schools him and what's happened to him now. News coming in tonight on the Breonna Taylor investigation shot eight times when police served a no-knock warrant during the night looking for someone else who was already in custody. The incident report now out listing her injuries as none. And the key vote happening tonight. And there's also breaking news coming in now. Authorities issuing a shelter in place order as they hunt down a suspect accused of shooting a deputy in the face. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Thursday night. We have several developing stories as we come on the air tonight, and we're going to begin with America's top general today apologizing for taking part in that walk with the president for his photo op in front of St. John's Church after that crowd of peaceful demonstrators was cleared for the president. You'll remember the president faced backlash after police and the Secret Service forcibly moved those demonstrators. Well, tonight, General Mark Milley, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, now saying he made a mistake, saying, quote, I should not have been there. And tonight, some Senate Republicans defying the president over the idea of changing the names of military bases named for Confederate leaders, suggesting it's time. The president saying it won't happen, that it's part of a great American heritage. We begin tonight with our chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl. Today, President Trump's top military advisor, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, apologized for walking with the president and his top aides across Lafayette Park to that photo op outside of St. John's Church. General Milley was right there, wearing his battle uniform. Just 30 minutes earlier, the space was forcibly cleared of peaceful protesters. I should not have been there. My presence in that moment and in that environment created a perception of the military involved in domestic politics. As a commissioned, uniformed officer, it was a mistake that I have learned from, and I sincerely hope we all can learn from it. The extraordinary apology comes after some of the nation's most respected retired military officers have condemned the episode, including former Defense Secretary General Jim Mattis, who blasted moving those protesters to, quote, provide a bizarre photo op for the elected commander-in-chief with military leadership standing alongside. Milley's comments were part of a commencement address for the National Defense University. He spoke forcefully about the right to protest as a bedrock American value. Few other nations have been able to change for the greater good, and that is because of the rights and values embedded in our Constitution. But the freedoms guaranteed to us in the Constitution allow people to demand change, just as the peaceful protesters are doing all across the country. He urged the graduates to reflect on what they have witnessed over the past two and a half weeks. What it means to all of us as Americans, what it means to you and I as leaders. Milley's apology comes amidst growing calls to rename U.S. Army bases that are now named for Confederate generals. The president has come out strongly against it, tweeting they have become part of a great American heritage. But today, the Republican-led Senate Armed Services Committee defied the president, voting to require that the bases be renamed. Today, some Republican senators said the time has come. If you want to continue to name ports after soldiers, there have been a lot of great soldiers that have come along since the Civil War. Well, I think this is a step in the right direction. This is the right time for it. 
Let's get right to John Carl live at the White House because, John, you're learning tonight that General Milley actually uh, considered resigning. ABC News has learned that General Milley was so upset about his role in the events that happened that day over in Lafayette Park that he thought about resigning, but ultimately decided that would be letting the troops down that were there and that the better course of action would be to apologize and to deliver the message that you heard him deliver to his fellow service members. David? All right, John Carl leading us off tonight. John, thank you. And of course, all of this playing out as America faces two crises and tonight coronavirus and the alarming prediction up to 200,000 American lives could be lost by September. The country crossing another staggering milestone now with more than 2 million reported cases of the virus, more than 113,000 American lives lost already. And tonight, at least 20 states with a rise in cases, the number doubling in Arizona alone over the last two weeks. Tonight, Texas reporting its largest single day in cases ever. And the economy, the Dow plummeting more than 1,800 points as this also takes its toll on American families and jobs, and tonight with the Federal Reserve Chair said about jobs that might not come back at all. Here's ABC's Kaylee Hartung. Tonight, a dire prediction. The coronavirus could kill 200,000 Americans by September. The U.S. already topping 113,000 deaths. We opened up with when the case level, levels were still quite high. Uh, we did not have enough testing in most states, so we're now seeing the consequences of that. As the country continues to reopen, a top Harvard Health official warning, without drastic action, more people will die. If we don't act, uh, the future is very grim. Two months ago, President Trump saying that startling number would be a sign the administration's response has been effective. We have between 100 and 200,000. Uh, we all together have done a very good job. Tonight, 20 states and Puerto Rico reporting increases in new cases. Texas with more new cases Wednesday than it's ever had in a single day. Houston taking innovative precautions, announcing a COVID threat alert system. One official sounding this alarm. We may be approaching the precipice the precipice of a disaster. In Arizona, daily new cases doubling over the past two weeks, and ICU beds are filling up. A month after Florida reopened, the state's reporting its highest number of new cases since the pandemic started. All this as other governors reject the idea of reinstating lockdowns as cases rise. We made the right decision to go ahead and lift some of these restrictions so that we don't cause more damage to people's lives and uh, their livelihood. And after another dismal unemployment report, the Dow plunging another 1,800 points. And let's get to Kaylee because there was one more point on this today on the economy. The Federal Reserve Chair with a sobering assessment on American jobs that have already been lost, Kaylee. David, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell says millions of American jobs may be gone for good. And he said more congressional aid may be necessary to prevent even more jobs from being lost. David saying some of those jobs might not come back at all. Kaylee, thank you. And in other news, the investigation in Tulsa tonight, the disturbing police confrontation, newly released body camera video showing two white officers stopping two black teenagers for jaywalking. ABC's Marcus Moore in Tulsa tonight with what happened next. Call my mama. Call my mama. Tonight, Tulsa's mayor and the local police are investigating this incident yes. involving two teenagers. Dramatic body camera footage shows the officers approached the teens just last week as they were walking down a neighborhood street. One officer grabs one of the teens by the arms. Slow. What are you on? Man, you ain't got nothing on him. Why y'all trying to say Just relax. What are you doing? What you guys doing? Why are you trying to choke hey, him? Why are you trying to choke his neck, man? Nobody's choking him. Within the span of a minute, the teen is on the ground and in handcuffs. Why are you putting handcuffs on him? Because. Why are you putting handcuffs on my kid? Well, all, he, all, he, anything on him, sir. all he was doing was jaywalking. We just want to talk with him. One of the teens was arrested and issued a citation. Tonight, his attorney says it never should have happened. I think about this that is disheartening, particularly in this time where police violence and brutality is everywhere. You would think that Tulsa police wouldn't do something like this at this time. But the reality is this is the culture of the Tulsa Police Department. David, we saw the street firsthand tonight. It does not appear to be heavily traveled, and there are no sidewalks. Tonight, Tulsa police tell us the teen who was arrested was arrested for jaywalking, assaulting a police officer, and obstruction. David. Marcus Moore tonight. Marcus, thank you. Meantime, the protesters across this country say they will press forward. And in Seattle tonight, demonstrators now seizing a six-block area outside a police station, creating what they're calling a police-free zone. And ABC's Matt Guppin from Seattle. 
Tonight, that continuing standoff in Seattle. What do we want? When do we want it? Now. Protesters seizing a six block area outside this police precinct, which is now boarded up and abandoned. Have you ever heard of police abandoning a police precinct? No, not on purpose. The so called autonomous zone now complete with barricades, a clinic, and free food. The people recognize that this building is the is the people's. You know, we pay for it with our taxes. We just want to make sure that it's being used for the right things. Seattle PD under fire for its tactics over the past couple of weeks. Flashbangs and pepper spray used on crowds. <laughs> this little girl crying in pain. 14,000 complaints against police. And today, in an address to officers, the police chief angry over the retreat. You should know, leaving the precinct was not my decision. You fought for days to protect it. I ask you to stand on that line day in and day out. The chief says police now can't respond to all the calls for violent crimes in the neighborhood. President Trump calling on the governor and mayor to take back your city now. If you don't, I will. Seattle's mayor firing back. Make us all safe. Go back to your bunker. And just moments ago, Seattle's mayor responding to President Trump saying there will be no federal invasion of Seattle. As for what these protesters want, they tell us they want to defund the police. They want everybody who's been arrested in the protest to be released. And they want to turn that police station, David, into a community center. David. Matt Guffman in Seattle. Thanks, Matt. Now to the firestorm tonight after what an Ohio lawmaker asked. He also happens to be a doctor. What he asked about African Americans and the coronavirus. A medical expert then schooling him and what's happened to that lawmaker tonight. Here's Adrian Bankert. Growing calls tonight for an Ohio state senator to step down over what he said about African Americans and COVID-19. Republican Steve Huffman was speaking to the director of the Ohio Commission of Minority Health, who testified the black community has been disproportionately hit by the virus. The senator admitting there are clear disparities, then asking this. Senator Huffman, that is not the opinion of leading medical experts in this country. So do all populations need to wash their hands? Absolutely, sir. But that is not where you are going to find the, the variance and the rationale for why these populations are more vulnerable. The hearing was about whether to declare racism a public health crisis. Tonight, one of Huffman's Democratic colleagues says the words he used and the question he asked highlights what racism is from a systemic perspective. And David, as you mentioned, that state senator, also a doctor, fired tonight from the health care company where he works. Uh, that company saying that his statements were wholly inconsistent with their values. Huffman apologizing, saying his choice of words was, quote, awkward. David. Adrian Banker reporting in here in New York. Thank you, Adrian. There's also news coming in tonight in the deadly police shooting of Breonna Taylor in Louisville. Shot eight times tonight. The police incident report now out listing her injuries as none. And now a key vote in that city on no-knock warrants. Here's Steve Osinsami. It's one of the other shootings of black Americans that has sent protesters to the streets. This one, a woman in Louisville, Kentucky, saying her name, Brianna Taylor. And tonight, police who've been called out for killing her have released this incident report after three long months, and it's nearly blank, with very few details on what went wrong. The 26-year-old ambulance worker was shot dead in her own home March 13th by police who were trying to serve a no-knock warrant meant for someone else who was already in police custody. 911, hey. where is your emergency? I don't know what is happening. Somebody kicked in the door and shot my girlfriend. The report lists her injuries as none, even though she was shot eight times. Officers used a battering ram to break down her door, but under forced entry, it's checked no. None of the officers have been charged. I think it's insane. Why would you want to enter into a home in the middle of the night without announcing yourselves? This time, there is no police body camera video showing what happened, and police say they won't comment on an ongoing investigation. Local authorities in Louisville tonight are voting on something called Brianna's Law, a law that would limit these no-knock search warrants to cases involving an immediate threat of harm or death 
which wasn't the case when this young woman was killed. David. All right, Steve Osinsami tonight. Steve, thanks. We turn this evening to an ABC News investigation with our ABC station. Some eye-opening numbers when it comes to the arrests of African Americans across this country. What the numbers show. Here's our Chief Justice Correspondent, Pierre Thomas, now. Akil Carter was on his way home from church with his white grandmother when police pulled him over. Person in the back seat. I need you to step out of the car with your hands dropped. Up. He says the next thing he knew, guns were drawn, and he was ordered out of the car. I was, I was angry. I was nervous. I was terrified for my grandmother. Stop. Get down on your knees. On your knees. Put your hands up. Don't move, you understand? Akil was handcuffed, detained, and put in the back of a squad car. When he was finally released, police simply said this was a misunderstanding. No apologies. In the suburb of Milwaukee where Akil was detained, blacks are only 5% of the population, but accounted for 62% of arrests made in 2018, a rate 29 times higher than white arrests. A kill's encounter reflective of a broad pattern revealed in an ABC News investigation with our own stations. In 800 jurisdictions, black people were arrested at a rate five times higher than white people in 2018, when accounting for the racial makeup of the cities and counties those police serve. In 250 of those localities, blacks were 10 times more likely to be arrested than their white counterparts. We have to deal with the over-policing of low-income African-American communities in our country. It is a pervasive problem. David, we're seeing the same type of pattern in Minneapolis where Mr. Floyd was killed. Only 19% of the population there is black, but African-Americans were a stunning 63% of those arrested in 2018. David? All right, Pierre, our thanks to you tonight. And Pierre will have much more. The faces, the families behind these numbers, that's coming up tonight on Nightline. And when we come back right here tonight, breaking news coming in now in the manhunt for a man who shot a deputy in the face, what we have just learned. My name is Chanel Henderson, and I'm an area manager here at Amazon. When you walk into an Amazon fulfillment center, it's like walking into the chocolate factory and you want a golden ticket. It's an amazing feeling. My three-year-old, when we get a box delivered, he gets excited. He screams, mommy's work. When the pandemic started, we started shipping out all the safety stuff that would keep the associates safe to all the other Amazons. All of these are face masks. We've sent well over 10 million.